Thanks for tuning in. You're watching My CDL Buddy, and I'm your host. Today I'm going to show you how to do a pre-trip inspection on the Class A tractor trailer. Let's get started. Now we're going to conduct a CDL pre-trip inspection on a Class A tractor trailer with air brakes. When you do your CDL exam with the examiner, you can get one of three forms. The front of the vehicle, the side of the vehicle, or the trailer. No matter what form you get on the Class A tractor trailer, you always have to do the coupling devices, your external light operation check, and your in cab. So let's start with the front of the truck first. First thing I do on the front form of the vehicle, it's going to be starting from the top to the bottom of the vehicle. First we're going to start with our clearance lights. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure. They are proper color. They act as running lights when they are on. Then we're going to move down to our headlights. The headlights are not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear. All the bulbs, all the lenses are not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper color. They have four functions. The functions are headlights, high beams, four-way flashers, and turn signal indicators. Finally, on the front of the truck, we're going to look under the truck to make sure there is no leaks or nothing hanging under the vehicle. Now we're going to move on and open up the hood to start with the engine compartment. First thing I'm doing is unlatching the hood on both sides. Then I'm going to open the hood safely. Now we're going to move to the passenger side of the engine compartment to do the unique items first. We're going to start with the unique side, which is the passenger side of the engine compartment. First thing we're going to do, we're going to look at all the lines, all the hoses, make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, and there are no leaks. Make sure you check every line and every hose possible. After that, we're going to check our coolant reservoir. The coolant reservoir, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking at proper level. Also the cap is on tight, it's not broken, cracked, or leaking, and there is nothing spilling out of it. After that we're going to check our alternator. The alternator, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. This alternator, it is belt driven. The belt, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper tension. Under the alternator, we're going to look for our water pump. The water pump, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, there are no leaks. This water pump is belt driven. The belt, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it has proper tension. That's all we need to check on the unique side of this vehicle. Now we're going to move on to the driver's side of the engine compartment to check all the regular items. Now we're going to inspect the regular side of the engine compartment, which is the driver's side. Same thing as the unique side. First thing I want to check is all the lines, all the hoses, make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, and not leaking. After that, we're going to check for our oil dipstick. The oil dipstick, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. To check our oil, we'll pull out the dipstick, wipe it off, put it back in, pull it back out to make sure it's at proper level. Now you do not have to do this during your exam, but explain it and talk about it. The oil cap is on tight and not leaking. Next thing we got to check for is going to be our air compressor. Our air compressor, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking any air, and this air compressor is gear driven. The next item on our list is going to be hidden in the back of the engine compartment is our power steering pump. The power steering pump, it's not broken, not cracked, unsecure, not leaking. This power steering pump is gear driven. Now we're going to look at the power steering fluid reservoir. It's not broken, not cracked, unsecure. It's at proper level. There are no leaks coming out of it or any of the hoses. All the hoses are on tight. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure. 
The cap is on tight. There are no leaks coming out of the cap. Next item on the list, we're going to check your steering gearbox. The steering gearbox, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking any fluids. All the steering gearbox hoses and lines are not broken, not cracked, on secure, and not leaking. Connected to the steering gearbox, we have our three-piece steering linkage. The steering linkage, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no welds. Now we're going to check our frame. Our frame, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, there are no welds on the frame. We're going to get into our suspension area and start off with the spring mount. The spring mount, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, the front spring mount. The spring leaf, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not scissoring. The U-bolts, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, bolts are on tight. My shock absorber, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, and not leaking. My rear spring mount, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Now we're going to move in to do all the braking items. We're going to start with the brake line and hose. My brake line and brake hose, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. My brake chamber, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. My slack adjuster and my push rod, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, and there is less than one inch of play for proper brake adjustments. The inside of my wheel, we're going to check for our brake drum. The brake drum, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. My brake pad and lining, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. There is at least a quarter inch of padding to be safe. My inner tire wall, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no leaks. The top of my tire, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts or leaks. My tread depth is a minimum of four and 32 seconds of an inch of tread depth. Now we're gonna do the front of our wheel. Now we're gonna check the front of the wheel starting with the side wall of the tire. The tire, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts or leaks. My rim, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no illegal welds. I would check all my lug nuts to make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, they are on tight. Then we're going to check our axle seal to make sure it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it's not leaking. And then we're going to find finally our valve stem to make sure it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, there's a cap on it. On the valve stem with the tire gauge, I would check for the tire pressure to make sure there has at least 105 PSI in the tire to be safe and adequate with our tire pressure. Now what we're going to do, we're going to close the hood, latch it tight, and move on to the side of the vehicle to do the next form on the inspection. Now that we're done with the front form on this vehicle, we're going to move on to the side form. The side form starts with the driver door. It includes the side of the vehicle, the underside of the vehicle, one rear axle of the vehicle, and the rear of the vehicle. Let's start off with our door area. First thing I'm going to check is my driver door. Make sure it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. My mirror bracket and mirror mount, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. The marker light on the mirror, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. It is proper color. It acts as a running light. My lenses on my mirror, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear. Now we're going to check the function of our door and door handle. My door handle, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. It opens and closes freely. I'm going to open the door to inspect my door hinges. My door hinges, they're not broken, 
not cracked, on secure. I'm going to close my door and move to my side marker light. My side marker light, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. The functions are marker light, running light, emergency flashers, and signal light. Next, we're going to check our steps. The steps are not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear, no debris to slip on. Next, we're going to move on to our deaf tank. Our deaf tank, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. There are no leaks coming from under the deaf tank. All the hoses and lines are on secure, not cut, not broken, not cracked, not leaking. Our deaf cap. It's on secure, it's on tight. There is no leaks coming from it. After that, we're gonna move on to inspect our fuel tank. Our fuel tank, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no leaks. Our fuel lines and fuel hoses, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking, on tight. My fuel cap, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure has a safety chain and rubber seal. It is not leaking. There are no leaks coming from under my fuel tank. Now we're gonna move on and go back to the catwalk and rear steps. Now we're gonna talk about our catwalk. Our catwalk, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. No oil or debris to slip on. Our side step, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no debris to slip on. Our frame, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. There are no illegal welds. My exhaust, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, has no holes. There is no black suck coming out of it except at the tip of the exhaust. Now we're gonna look at our drive shaft. Our drive shaft, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. After we're finished with the drive shaft, I'm going to go inside and find my torque arm. My torque arm, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Now we're going to move on to our braking components. I'll start with the brake hoses and the brake lines. All the brake hoses and lines are not broken, not cracked, on secure, there are no leaks. My brake chamber. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no leaks. Under my brake chamber, which is very hard to see, is my slack adjuster and push rod. My slack adjuster and push rod, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. You wanna check them, make sure there is no more than one inch of play for proper brake adjustment. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to go into my suspension area before I get to my brake drum, not to miss any items. Let's start with my suspension. My spring mount, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. My spring leafs and control arm, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, not scissoring. My U-bolts, which are back here, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. Behind my U-bolts, I have my shock absorber. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. Now we're gonna go behind that to check my spring mount and my airbag. Now we're gonna check the airbag. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, and not leaking. Here we have our spring mount on the rear. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Now we're gonna go back to check our brake drum, brake pads or lining, and then move on to the tire and wheel. Now we're gonna move back to the brake drum. The brake drum, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Next to the brake drum, we have our brake linings or pads. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure. There is a sufficient amount of padding to be safe. Our side wall on the tires, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no leaks. The front of the rear tires, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. Tread depth has to be two and 30 seconds of an inch at the minimum. 
In between these tires, by our bud spacing, there is no dead animal, no debris, no foreign objects in there. Now we're going to move to the front of our wheel and our tire. Now we're going to check the side wall of the tire and also our wheel area. We'll start with the tire. The sidewall, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no leaks. Our rim, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no illegal welds. Check all our lug nuts, make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, and not loose or missing. Our axle seal, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, all the bolts are on tight, there is no leaks under the axle seal. Our valve stem, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. The cap is on tight. I would check the valve stem with the tire gauge to make sure I have at least 105 PSI of air in my tire. Now we're going to move on to the back end of the tractor. Now we're going to move to the end of the tractor, our final part of the side of the vehicle portion. We're going to start with our mud flaps. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure not dragging on the ground with proper clearance. The bracket that holds the mud flap is not broken, not cracked, on secure. Our DOT reflective tape on the mud flap at the end of the vehicle, it's clean and clear. The two tail lights on the back end, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, red in color. They function as four-way emergency flashers, turn signals, brake lights, and running tail lights. That is it for the side of the tractor. Now we're going to move on to our coupling devices. Now we're going to do our coupling devices. No matter what form you get on the pre-trip inspection, you will have to do the coupling devices. Today we're going to do the coupling devices before we do our trailer portion. So let's start with the connections, the airlines, hoses, and electric line. First thing we want to check Make sure every line, every hose, it's not broken, not cracked, not leaking, on secure. Let's start with the airlines. The red airline is the emergency brake line. The glad hands that connect to the trailer are not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking any air, connected properly. The blue line that's connected to the trailer by the glad hand, that's our service brake line. It's not broken, not cracked on secure, no leaks, connected to the trailer properly. The green line is our electric line. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, connected to the trailer properly with the safety latch holding it in place. Now after checking all the hoses and lines, we're going to check our air connections to the tractor. Both sides of the connections are not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. And then the electrical connection, just like on the trailer, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. The safety latch is on tight. Now we're going to go to our fifth wheel assembly area for the next phase for the coupling devices. Now we're going to inspect the coupling items that connect the trailer and tractor together. First, we're going to start with the top, which is the apron. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no illegal welds. The fifth wheel skid plate, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it's properly greased. There is no daylight in between the fifth wheel and apron. The safety latch, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, the bolt's on tight. Our release arm, it's in lock position, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, you want to make sure that it works properly. Our mounting bolts on our platform, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, all on tight. The platform, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. This is not a sliding fifth wheel. If you had a sliding fifth wheel, you want to make sure that the locking pins are on tight and locked properly. Now we're going to go to the back end of the tractor to check for our locking jaws and our kingpin by our fifth wheel skid plate. Now we're going to inspect the locking jaws and the kingpin on the coupling device area. The locking jaws, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, properly locked around our kingpin. Our kingpin, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it is properly greased. After we do that, we have to ensure that we have enough space 
between our landing gear and the end of our tractor for proper clearance. Now we're done with our coupling devices and we're going to move on to the final portion of the pre-trip, which is our trailer. Now we're going to inspect the trailer portion of the pre-trip inspection on the Class A tractor trailer. We're going to start off with the front of the trailer first. I usually start from top to bottom. On the top of the trailer, the clearance lights, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper color. They function as running lights. The front headboard of the trailer, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no holes, no daylight coming in and out of it. Then we're gonna go to the side of the trailer, start from top to bottom, from front to back. I would check all my clearance lights, make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, they're all proper color and functioning. They function as running lights. Then I would do all my DOT reflective tape on the side of the trailer, make sure it's clean and clear, the proper amount. After that, we're gonna move down to our landing gear. Now we're gonna inspect the landing gear on the trailer. Make sure your landing gear devices are not broken, not cracked, on secure. The bottom base and legs, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. You would check your arm to make sure it brings your landing gear up and down and the landing gear arm is secured properly on the landing gear device hook. Now we're gonna move down to check our side marker light and then move on to the underside of the trailer and the back axles. The side marker light, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper color. It functions as a running light, turn signal light, and a four-way emergency flasher indicator. Now let's go to the back axle and the underside of the trailer. Now we're gonna inspect the underside of our trailer and one of the rear axles. So on the underside of our trailer, first thing we wanna check as a sliding tandem trailer to make sure that the rail, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, and the locking pin, it's in place. Then we're gonna check our trailer frame to make sure it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Under that, we're gonna talk about our spring mount to make sure that it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. The control arm behind the mount, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. We wanna check all our lines and hoses for our sliding tandem to make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking any air. After that, we're gonna move on to check all our brake hoses and lines to make sure they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. We're gonna move on to our brake chamber. The brake chamber, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking. Under the brake chamber, which is very hard to see from here, you're gonna check your slack adjuster and push rod. Make sure it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, has less than one inch of play for proper brake adjustment. And inside of this area, we're going to check our U-bolts. The U-bolts, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. Then we're going to move to the back area of that front axle to check our airbag. Behind the front axle, we're going to check our airbag. Make sure our airbag is not broken, not cracked, on secure, not leaking, properly mounted to our trailer. Now we're going to go back and start off with the brake drum and brake pads. Now we're gonna get into our brake drums. Our brake drums are behind the wheel. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure. Next to our brake drums, we have our brake pads. The brake pads are not broken, not cracked, on secure, with a sufficient amount of padding to be safe. The inner tire walls, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no leaks. The front of the tires, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. On the rear tires, such as these, you need at least two and 30 seconds of an inch tread depth at the minimum. Between the butt spacing on the rear tires, there is no dead animal, no debris, no foreign objects in there to impede the wheel function. Now we're gonna go and check the front of the wheel and the side of the tire. Now we're gonna talk about our tire and our wheel. The sidewall of the tire. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no cuts, no leaks. 
My rim, it's not broken, not cracked, unsecure, and no illegal welds. Our lug nuts, they're not broken, not cracked, unsecure. None of them are loose or missing. Our axle seal, it's not broken, not cracked, unsecure. It's at proper level with a proper type of fluid with no leaks under it. Our valve stem, it's not broken, not cracked, unsecure, has a cap. I would check the valve stem with a tire gauge to make sure there is at least 105 PSI of air in my tire. Now we're going to move on to the rear end of the trailer. Now we're going to check the rear mud flap on the back of the trailer. The mud flap, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Proper clearance, it's not dragging to the ground. We're going to check the rear side marker lights on the trailer. The first light is the ABS light. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper color. And the rear little light here, the red one, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, proper color. They're both clean and clear. This is going to be a running marker light. Now we're going to go to the back of the trailer. Now we're going to finish the trailer part of the inspection with inspecting the rear of the trailer. Same thing, I start from the top to the bottom, not to miss any items. Top portion of my trailer, I'm going to look at my marker lights. They're not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear, red in color. They are functioned as running lights. My doors, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure. My door locks and handles are not broken, not cracked, on secure. The door opens and closes properly. You do not have to do that during the inspection, but you just talk about it and explain it to your examiner. My rear tail lights, they're not broken, not cracked, proper color, clean and clear. The tail lights have four functions, emergency flashers, signals, brake lights, and running tail lights. Last thing I want to check, it's going to be my DOT bumper. It's not broken, not cracked, on secure, and it has 100% reflective tape, and it's clean and clear. Now we just finished off the trailer part of the inspection. I'm going to walk down the side of the passenger side of the vehicle to check if there's any unique items before we start our external light operation check. Once you have completed the pre-trip inspection on the outside of the vehicle, the next step is to do an external light operation check. Depending on what form you got, whether it's the front form, side form, or the trailer form of the vehicle for your inspection, that's where you will do your light check. Your examiner will read you the instructions. You'll hop in the truck and start your light check. So I'm gonna hop in the vehicle to start with the front of the vehicle's external light operation check. When you get in the truck, you wanna make sure you have three points of contact at all times to ensure safety. Once you're in the vehicle, the first thing you want to do is put your vehicle on electrical mode to power up your vehicle, but do not start your engine. Once the vehicle is in electric mode, you will start your external light operation check. Your examiner will stand either in front of the truck, behind the tractor at the rear of the tractor, or behind the trailer to check the light's functions. Today we're going to start off with the front of the truck. The first lights that I want to check is my left turn signals. The left turn signal is on, the examiner will tell you if it's good and working. Then I'm going to check my right turn signal. The right turn signal is on, the examiner will tell you if it's good and working. Then I'm going to do my four-way emergency flashers. My four-way emergency flashers are on, the examiner will tell me if they are good and working. Then I will turn on my headlights. Once the headlights are on, you will tell the examiner my headlights and my clearance lights. The examiner will check those and let you know if they're good and working. The last lights that I'll check on the front of the vehicle are going to be my high beams. You tell the examiner, check my high beams, the high beams. They are good and working. Now we're going to move to do the rear of the tractor. On the rear of the tractor, the lights I'm going to check are going to be, first of all, my brake lights. The brake lights are working. Now I'm going to move on to do my turn signals. My left turn signal, it is working. 
My right turn signal, the examiner says it's working. My four-way flashers, they are working. And I'll turn on my headlights so my tail lights can turn on and the examiner will tell you if they're working. The next light check I'm going to do is on the rear of the trailer. On the rear of the trailer, very similar to the back of the tractor. First thing I'm going to do is my brake lights. I'm going to push down my brake pedal. My examiner will check my brake lights on the rear of the trailer to tell me that they are working. Then I'm going to do my left signal indicator. It is working. Then I'm going to do my right signal indicator. It is working. I'm going to do my four-way emergency flashers, make sure they are working. Then I'm going to turn on my headlights to turn on my running tail lights and my rear marker lights. Make sure they are all working. Once I'm done with all the lights, I will tell my examiner that I am finished with all my lights on my external light operation check and I'm ready for my in cab. After completing your external light operation check, your examiner will tell you to sit tight in the truck. The examiner will get into the truck and read you instructions on your in-vehicle inspection and your engine start portion. When you do the in-cab, do not forget to do all the braking tests. The examiner will not tell you this. You have to know that's part of your in-cab by yourself. So make sure to not forget that portion of the inspection. Let's start your in-cab. The first thing I do, I usually move from left to right, not to miss any items. My first item on my list is going to be my seat belt. My seat belt, it's not broken, not cracked, unsecure, no cuts, no frays, buckles, and unbuckles properly. During your in cab inspection, leave your seat belt on. Next item, I'm going to do my driver's side mirror. The mirror, it's not broken, not cracked, unsecure, clean and clear, properly adjusted to my view. My windshield, my windshield, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, no illegal stickers blocking my view. My passenger side mirror, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, clean and clear, no illegal stickers blocking my view. Next items I'm going to talk about is my emergency equipment. In the back of the cab, I have my fire extinguisher. It is BC or better, properly charged, secure to the floor. In the back, I also have my three reflective triangles. They're not broken, not cracked, secure to the floor, clean and clear, working properly. Inside my glove compartment, I have my emergency spare fuses. They're not broken, not cracked, sitting secure in the bag. Once I'm done with my emergency equipment, I'm going to go to my safe start. I have to start my vehicle. First thing I do, I find my key. Make sure I put my vehicle into electrical mode. Once I do that, I look onto my dash to make sure my ABS light comes on and goes off. If my ABS light stays on, that means I have an ABS issue. I'm going to put my vehicle in neutral, make sure my parking brakes are applied, put my foot on the service brake, and start my engine. Now that my engine is started, what I want to do, I want to check all my gauges on my dashboard. First gauge I'm going to check is my def gauge. My def gauge, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. If there is a light, the light reads that it's full or at proper level. Or if it's a gauge, as it is here, we got to make sure it's at proper level. My water temperature gauge, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure. Either it's rising or at proper level. My oil pressure gauge, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it's at proper level. My voltmeter, it's not broken, not cracked, on secure, it is at proper level of voltage. My fuel gauge, it's at proper level, or I have to have enough fuel to finish my trip or get to a fueling station. The last gauges I check are my air brake gauges, primary and secondary. Both of my air brake gauges, they're not broken, not cracked, on secure, rising or at proper level. Next thing I do, I move from left to right once again. I'm going to go to my indicator arm. I'm going to check all my indicators. Left turn signal indicator, properly working. Right turn signal indicator, properly working. 
emergency four-way flashers. They're properly working. And my high beam indicator is properly working. Once I do that on the same indicator bar on this truck, I'm gonna check my wipers and my washers. My wiper fluid is properly working, spraying onto my windshield, and my wipers, they are cleaning my windshield, properly working, not broken, not cracked. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna test my city horn, make sure it's working, my electric horn. Next, I'm gonna do my air horn. My air horn does work, or they, you can call it the highway horn. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna jump in to check my defrost and floor heat. So I'm gonna put my vehicle in heating position, turn on my fan, make sure I do the proper adjustment on the vents. My defrost is working, I can feel it here. The air is coming through and my floor heat is working also. Now I'm gonna turn off my defrost and my floor heat. The last thing I'm gonna check now is my brakes. So let's move on to the braking tests. First braking test I'm gonna do is the most important one, is my lab test. If you do not do this right, you automatically fail your test, so pay attention. Uh, first thing I'm gonna to mention to the examiner is my air tank gauges, primary and secondary, are at proper level and full. Then I'm gonna turn off my truck, put the truck on electrical mode so I can read my dash, put my foot on the service brake to hold the vehicle, and I'm gonna release my parking brakes. Once the air settles out, I'm gonna start my lab test. Step number one. I'm gonna hold my foot on the brake for one minute and I have to count that minute or have the examiner count that minute. And while I hold my foot on the brake, I do not lose more than four PSI of air in my air tanks to count my leakage rate. My minute is up, I counted to a minute. I did not lose more than four PSI of air in my air tanks. It's a good test. Next up, we're gonna check the alarm and buzzers. I'm gonna fan my foot brake, my service brake, to around 60 to 40 PSI, a alarm and or buzzer should come on to indicate that I have low air in my air tanks. Let's do that now. My alarm and buzzer did come on, that works properly. Now we're gonna to move to the final step, the buttons. My emergency spring brake should come on while I'm fanning my brake to 20 to 40 PSI to indicate that those work also. Let's move to the last step, let's fan the brakes. My buttons both popped out around 20 to 40 PSI that was a successful test. We're gonna move on to start the vehicle, build the air back up, to do the service brake and the parking brake test. Let's do that now. Make sure the vehicle's neutral, your brakes are on, put on the brake, start your truck. To build the air quicker, we're gonna hit the accelerator a little bit to around 10 or 12 RPM, and we're gonna move that air pressure to build much faster than usual. some trucks, the air pressure takes longer to build than other trucks. So we got to get to at least 100 PSI of air at the minimum or more before we start the service brake test.
now that we're around 100 PSI of air, we're gonna do our service brake test. The way we do that, we put our foot on the service brake, put the vehicle in drive, release the parking brakes. Now we're gonna accelerate to about five miles per hour or 10 or 20 feet and see if the service brake actually stops the vehicle. We're going about five miles per hour. I'm gonna hit the service brake. It did stop the vehicle. Also, the vehicle did not sway from left to right or right to left to indicate a suspension problem. Now we're gonna put the vehicle in neutral, pull both parking brakes out. Next, we're gonna uh, test our parking brakes. We'll start off with the tractor brake. We're gonna put our foot on the service brake, put the vehicle in drive, release the trailer brake to test the tractor brake. Leave the tractor br uh, brake on. I'm gonna hit the accelerator a little to make sure that the parking brake for the tractor holds. It does hold, we're not going anywhere. Now I'm gonna put my foot back on the service brake, pull out the trailer brake, push in the tractor brake. Now we're gonna test the parking brake on the trailer. Same thing, get your foot off the service brake, hit the accelerator a little bit to make sure we're not moving, and we are not. So it's kind of a tug test to make sure that your parking brakes do work. Now we're gonna put our vehicle back in neutral, pull the brakes back out, now I feel that I have completed my entire pre-trip exam properly and I'm going to tell my examiner I'm done with the exam. Now if you do something wrong, you forgot an item, you can go back to it. Your examiner will let you do that. Also on the lab test, if you did something wrong, you forgot to do your leak or your alarms or buttons, ask the examiner, can I restart my lab test? They will let you restart the lab test. Start your truck, build your air, restart it from scratch. So we have completed the in-cab inspection, and that's your pre-trip on the Class A tractor trailer. Thanks for watching.